hello and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about some book talk drama as usual. That seems to be something that I have a lot to say on because I'm a part of book talk and so I have a lot of opinions and feelings that I just want to share. Today we're talking about a recent controversy um, or really an ongoing controversy that just kind of like blew up again and that is with creator Kiera Lewis. If you've maybe heard of the quote unquote queen of book talk, you would know that that name has been attached to her. But what led to this complete backlash of calling her the queen of book talk? What does this controversy tell us about online influencer culture? And also, what does it mean to be a queen? I hope to answer all of those questions, as well as maybe give a little bit of a backstory for people who just got into book talk and are maybe wondering why there's so much backlash against this creator. I think that it's important to, I think, Fiera and this whole Queen of Book Talk situation, some people have labeled it as more people being haters on her or being jealous of her success, when I think that there is a deeper reason why people have such disdain for her within our community. Hopefully I can give some perspective on that, at least coming from what I've seen. So if you don't know who Kiera is, she's known for her very lively, animated reactions to the books that she reads, whether she's doing cartwheels or screaming, crying, just very big reactions to the books that she reads. Her content kind of taps, and at least the content that she got the most popular for is maybe her more spicier takes, some of her more spicy reactions to books that have a lot of sexual content, especially, which we'll get into a little bit later, the hockey genre in particular. That was probably one of her biggest controversies that we'll get into later. Now, I will say, Kiara did come into book talk already with a large following. She's kind of been on the internet for like probably six or seven years, whether it's on YouTube or on TikTok. And she's been essentially creating content for a pretty long time. Before she was in the book talk space, she was actually doing reaction content to music videos, making thirsty videos about men and the country music scene. And with this, it kind of, from what I did in my research, it kind of seemed like that content that she was making in that scene was starting to make people feel uncomfortable and they kind of were uncomfortable with the way that she was sexualizing those male country stars. So then her content sort of pivoted over to talking about books, pivoted over to talking about books like Colleen Hoover, It Ends With Us. But I do want to reiterate the fact that Kiara has been in the creator space for a very long time. Her following that she had before then kind of translated and stayed with her while she has transitioned into other content. She's also gone viral a couple different times. There was the one video she went viral for where she was telling people that they need to be more delusional. Be delusional. Fuck what everybody talk about this whole be realistic. My key to life, the reason why I be having so much fun is I'm delusional as fuck. And just think about it. Who are you hurting by being delusional? Who are you hurting by thinking you are the shit? You gonna be, I think I'm gonna be the first millionaire in my family. Do I have proof of that? Hell fucking no. So I say again, be delusional. Believing that you can do the impossible as long as you stay delusional that you can do it. That was sort of a thing that she's went viral for. Again, her big reactions to books with her style of videos. It sort of gives a lot of hype to whatever she's reading. And so that then translates over into people wanting to work with her because she's giving such a grand, huge reaction to something or to a book or to an artist which then is very attractive to brands who just want to hear nothing but positive things about the thing that they're trying to sell. And in this case, authors with their books. Now, what Kiara is known for the most is the biggest controversy is the situation between her and the Seattle Kraken. Seattle Kraken, which is a hockey team. Kiara was reading a book that's very popular within the hockey romance genre called Pucking Around by Emily Wilde, I believe. And Kiera was, in a sense, at first the content was, oh my gosh, hockey players, I didn't know how attractive they are, look at all these really attractive hockey players, and then it sort of transitioned into being a lot more sexual. Not my man knowing how to swim, period! Oh. Look, Vince, I'm gonna tell you right now, if your goal is to get drenched, you ain't even have to go that deep in the ocean. All you have to 
do was hit this sister up and you could have found out why they nicknamed this kitty the great five lake hello but as you can see it's more sexual and the seattle kraken definitely played into this type of content in the beginning. They played into the whole rise in women finding these hockey players attractive and followed Kiera and actually flew her out to one of their games. While she was at the game, they also gave her a book talk jersey. And also while Kiera was there, she was holding up signs and chanting, quote, crack my back. Yeah. But this relationship soured when Alex Winberg, the main male who was being sexualized on the Seattle Kraken, his wife, Felicia, released a statement on her social media, rightfully so, publicly criticized this content, criticized the way that these men, especially her husband, was just trying to do their job and they were being sexualized while they were trying to do their job. Yara in particular was called out because she was the one that created the slogan, crack my back, a phrase that was being yelled during the games while the wife and children of these players were sitting right there, as well as the players. Felicia called for respect, highlighting the line between admiration and harassment. It also highlighted the fact that now Kiara did not take this criticism well, and she also felt really attacked by being singled out. She made a lot of not great statements during her lives when she was going through this entire mess. She made statements that maybe she, that Felicia, Alex's wife, is upset because he's cheating on her. She was okay with it in the beginning and she was even playing into it, talking about, oh, they all these women think my husband is hot. She was playing into it. Why all of a sudden is she doing this? Why all of a sudden did the team, the Seattle Kraken, during the situation unfollowed her. She was completely defensive. What Kiara didn't quite understand, and something I think she still doesn't understand, is that consent can be revoked. You can be okay with something in the moment, but then say that actually that really did make me feel uncomfortable and maybe stop doing it. Kiara went on many, many lives, made videos, and clearly did not want to take any criticism for this situation which then put book talk into the national news where people were talking about our community as though we were a bunch of hypersexual women who just sexualize men without their consent. It was a pretty, it was a pretty tough time to be a book talker. <clears throat> but I really want to talk about the fact that this is probably, and again, Kira has had criticisms of her for ever since she really got into the book talk space. But I really want to reiterate with this one that she does not take criticism very well. She tends to look at criticism as though it is a bunch of people who are being haters and not those who are truly trying to call out someone with a very large platform. Calling out someone does not mean that you hate them. It a lot of time means that you are presenting a behavior that is harmful to a community and maybe you need to do something about that. Kira also then said that she felt targeted because she was a black woman in a space that is majority white. I can't say whether or not racism was involved in that situation because I'm not Kiara and I'm not anyone who is directly involved with that. But I can say that people weren't calling her out just because she was a black woman. Felicia's post had didn't even tag Kiara. Felicia's post was just highlighting over the line comments that people were leaving on pictures of her family and her kids. For the way that Kiara felt singled out and bullied, she then turned that hate around on Felicia. People were leaving horrible, awful comments about her husband, about him being a cheater, about her being jealous. Underneath pictures of her, her family, her kids, it was out of control. And Kiara to this day, has not taken any responsibility for that, as well as not really looked inward onto how the situation should have been handled. She kind of just breezed past it, wait for the tide to clear until she went on to do something else. But this conversation really opened up conversations about boundaries and parasocial relationships. How much is too much when discussing real people? And when does it cross over into harassment? Also talked about how consent can be revoked. Now, after this situation, Kiara continued to have a large following. I think she maybe lost a 
couple thousand, but I'm sure she's pretty much gained more than that recently, especially with her pivot to doing now Harry Potter content. Some of her supporters say that she's unfairly targeted. Book talk has officially lost their minds. The mean girls have come out. Women love to go against other women. It's frustrating. Why do you care? I think that's where I'm at. I'm sorry. My opinion. My opinion. Come on, book talk. Do better. You couldn't just be happy that a book talker got on Kelly Clarkson? Some people just don't like Kiara because she's loud because she's someone who has a lot of big reactions that may sometimes feel very not genuine. And yeah, some people just don't like her because they don't like her personality. But I think that personally, what I notice for people whose, whose opinions that I fully agree with is the reason, big reasons why people don't like Kiera on the book talk space is because it's because her platforming problematic authors like Sarah J Moss. J.K. Rowling or Colleen Hoover. Her lack of diversity when it comes to the books that she chooses to promote and people feeling like she's using this book talk community to gain money and attention and not actually being and not actually wanting to be a genuine be a part of a community that just loves to share their love for reading. There has been some anecdotes of people saying that when they will go to book conventions and care is there that she's not the nicest as well as authors who have also come out and said that they had similar experiences with Kier. And not to say that like every single time you meet someone you need to have a positive reaction, but I don't know about you, but when, when I'm following someone and they become my favorite influencer and you see that in real life, they're the complete opposite of who they present themselves to be online, it's a little disheartening. As well as there was a list that was during the whole hockey situation there was a list that was leaked talking about the prices that Kiera charges to promote someone's book. And while she has these influencer list prices, which, hey, get your money, whatever, but on some of those posts that she used to promote these books, she did not put that it was a paid partnership. She did not put that she was being paid for these reviews. Like from an audience perspective, I would want to know if you're being paid to review and love this book so much. I mean, yeah, some, I mean, however you feel about paid reviews is how you feel about paid reviews, but I feel like it should be disclosed. Now let's talk about the recent controversy. Kiera was on the Kelly Clarkson show. Kelly Clarkson introduced her as the quote, queen of book talk for many people. Now for many people, Kiera's quote, queen of book talk. Dumb. It's about her influence and boldness. But for me, it brings bigger conversations about leadership and community, especially in the book talk community, which has such a had such a foothold in the book publishing industry. Does popularity equate to being a true leader? And how should we define queenship in such a space? It reflects a lot about what we value as a community, whether it's authenticity, relatability, or just sheer entertainment. What makes her the queen? Is it because she reviews and talks about books that are already popular? Is it because she has a large following? Is it because when you look at her comment section, it's nothing but people giving her positive feedback? What makes her a queen? What would make anyone a queen? Could there even be a queen at all? No. If you want my no, there should not be a queen at all. So this monarchy thing, since when are we a monarchy? You can't self-proclaim yourself as something and come out and be like, I'm the queen of book talk. That's weird behavior. That is really weird behavior. There's no queens here. We're all queens. We're all kings. This is not a monarchy. It's a community. And I feel like doing that too and self-proclaiming it is weird. But if anything, she's more of the queen of being problematic. Here, of course, with her platform, what she does, what she always does, is she responds. Can I just say the fact that the past few days I've seen a hashtag book talk be in a of war about two words that hasn't come out of my mouth in the past two years, it blows my freaking mind. The fact that people are like, she's calling herself, first of all. If you know me or if you've ever met me, the only thing I ever call myself, aside from my actual government name, is I always said since I was a kid, I want to be this generation's Oprah Winfrey. 
I want to be the mini Oprah Winfrey. But to see so many think pieces and negative videos from people that claim to have me blocked, from people that claim to hate me, to despise me, to oh, I can't even bear her screams and all this, it blows my mind. To see them say, oh, we've never voted. First of all, booktop is a hashtag, a powerful hashtag, don't get me wrong. But to see people say, oh, she thinks she's the queen, she thinks, first of all, I think I'm Kiara Bad Bitch Lewis. I think whatever I think and what y'all believe are two different things. Y'all love to point me out as this villain character when time and time again, you see from my videos, I make my videos, I go about my life. Cry, scream, yes for some that might be too much, yes for some that might be not enough. I've never been one to use my platform since the beginning to belittle, to speak down on, to spew hate on anyone. So for me to see time and time again throughout this year, y'all go berserk over two words that hasn't came out of my mouth in over two years, it blows my freaking mind. Now a lot of the time when Kira responds to these things, she tends to again not really take accountability or really not really wanting to engage with what people are saying. In the video of her response, she does something that a lot of creators do that I find to be irritating is they say that they're creating this positive space and I spend most of my I spend most of my time spreading nothing but positivity and everyone is just so negative and everyone's a hater. I have a problem with creators who do that. They think that because they don't make videos talking about politics or about negative things or they don't post negative reviews or whatever that they're somehow more positive. But I think to me, creators that I follow, creators that I engage with, the ones who I think actually create a positive community are the ones that I stand up for something or stand up for people who are marginalized. It's not just people who put their head in the sand for every horrible thing that's going on in the world. There's a difference between people being a hater and being negative all the time and only speaking about negativity and those who are raising awareness, trying to make their community better by reading diversely, by talking about diverse authors, by calling out bad actors within our own community. Those types of things are what creates a safe space for your audience. Sure, you can create a positive space, but I think that truly creating a more safe space is better for your community overall. I like to know that creator that I follow has values that they're not going to not put that they're being paid to promote a book to me. Now, I do say what's interesting in her statement is she said she wants to be the next Oprah, which is interesting. Now, Oprah in the past couple of years has gotten some backlash. I don't know if Kier has been paying attention, but let's talk about the ways that some people have been talking about Oprah, like how maybe she seeks fame over substance, like having a health-focused approach leading to very manipulative content that prioritizes financial gain over genuine impact, or how about Oprah's oversimplifying of complex issues. Oprah has done a lot for the Black community, as well as representation with Black women in the media, of course. But I think that wanting to be the next Oprah is interesting in the sense of everything that I just talked about. Sometimes it feels like Kiara cares more about the fame and money aspect than really creating a community, which is something that's very, very big on book talk is community. And I don't think she cares about that. In the end, Kiara's story and her influence and her time on the internet and her time in book talk has really showed us the power and pitfalls of being a large influencer. She has opened doors to some pretty interesting conversations to call her the queen of book talk when there isn't really a leader. Book talk was around before Kiara, and book talk will be around when Kiara decides that she's too big for it. Which, okay, yeah, that was maybe a little dodgy, but whatever. And I think that. Kira would probably see this video and think that I'm a hater, but I think that as she grows as a influencer, as she gets bigger and bigger, which I know she will, I hope she realizes that your influence and your power with the world that we're in now, influencers have a lot of power. 
they have the ability to make or break careers and and maybe you should sometimes use that influence for good maybe don't use that influence by promoting problematic authors um like harry potter maybe i don't know that's all i have for today just a short little video hopefully hope you have a great day let me know how you feel about the situation in comments do you know who here is are you a fan of book talk are you tired of me talking about book talk i'm not so i'll probably continue to make videos on this and yeah what are your feelings and i'll talk to you later Bye bye